What were the Twin Towers? Chapter two. Chapter two, Sky High Towers. The idea for the World Trade Center was hatched in the brain of a very rich banker. His name was David Rockefeller. He was the president of Chase Manhattan Bank, one of the largest banks in the world. In 1960, Rockefeller built a new headquarters for the bank. It was a 60-story glass and steel skyscraper in Lower Manhattan near Wall Street. This area was often called the dullest part of Manhattan. It was full of older office buildings for law firms and accounting companies. At night, it was a ghost town. David Rockefeller wanted Lower Manhattan to attract all kinds of businesses and become a lively neighborhood. He couldn't afford to build more big skyscrapers by himself, so he approached the Port Authority to help with the project. It was smart of Rockefeller to ask the Port Authority. It had a special power called eminent domain. This meant it could get rid of privately owned buildings to make way for its projects. It didn't matter if there were homes or businesses where it wanted to build, they would be torn down. When the new project called the World Trade Center was proposed, the Port Authority used eminent domain to get the land it needed. By the fall of 1961, a plan called for the World Trade Center to be built over a railway terminal that linked Manhattan to New Jersey. The location was a 12 block square near the Hudson River. That's as big as 74 football fields. Most of the site was covered by old low buildings, some brick houses, garages, and lofts. They would all have to be knocked down. Would anybody really mind if those buildings were torn down to make way for the Trade Center? Yes, there turned out to be a lot of opposition for the plan. Part of the area was known as Radio Row because so many stores sold or repaired radios and electronics. Small business owners tried to stop the project. Owners of office buildings were also against the plan. With so much new office space available, 10 million square feet, rents would drop in the older buildings in the area. Landlords would lose money. But there was also strong support for the project. Following a 1962 speech, President John F. Kennedy said that the Trade Center would be good for the country's economy. Yet even with backing from a president, big projects do not happen one, two, three. The World Trade Center did get approved, but the process dragged on more than five years from March 1961 to August 1966. New York City was going to get two new giant buildings. Still, city officials wanted something more for so much disruption in the area. The head of the Port Authority was a man named Austin J. Tobin. He came up with an idea. All the dirt dug up in the process of building the World Trade Center would be trucked a few blocks away then it would be dumped into the Hudson River. This would create 23 acres of new land for Manhattan. New York City would own the land and could either sell or develop it. Tobin's idea was very clever. New York City got free new land and the Port Authority didn't have to pay for all that dirt to be carted to some faraway place. Finally, the project was approved and ready to go, except for one thing. There was no definite plan for the buildings. In fact, an architect had not even been chosen. The Port Authority asked seven firms of architects to offer ideas. The organization told the architects that their plans had to create a city within a city with at least 10 million square feet of space to rent and towers at least 100 stories tall. It had to have an outdoor plaza for visitors and workers, an underground shopping mall, and a link to local subways and railways. The winning architect was a Japanese-American man named Minoru Yamasaki. Yamasaki had designed important buildings in big cities before, but the Trade Center would be his largest by far. He spent months drawing and making models. His final plan showed two towers with a large plaza. Several smaller buildings were spread around the site. The tire towers that he'd planned, however, were no taller than 80 floors, and they would have only 8 million square feet of rental space. 
the man in charge of the project, was named Guy F. Tozzoli. Yama, Tozzoli said, President Kennedy is going to put a man on the moon. You're going to have to figure out a way to build me the tallest building in the world. Yamasaki went back to his drawing board. His new design had towers that were each 110 stories. Now the Trade Center would have the 10 million square feet of office space. Guy F. Tozzoli gave the okay.